Today we have returned to explore the depths of Psalm 67, and if you've read the chapter, which hopefully you have, you'll realize that there's not going to be too much depth to get into because there's only seven verses. Pretty short one today. Our PDF is available on our website, of course, as it always is, every day that we do these studies. And let's talk about our author. The author of Psalm 67 is unknown. It's not told to us in the psalm. And I'm, not also, I'm also not aware of any New Testament references back to Psalm 67. Themes, the world will know the name of God through his people. And then number two, all nations of the earth should praise and fear God. Speaking of the fear of God, let's talk about our definition section. We want to talk about what exactly it means to fear God and the way that the Bible uses that. In modern vernacular, we use the word fear to talk about things that terrify us, often things that we perceive to want to do us harm, hungry lions, hungry tigers, etc., However, when the scriptures talk about the fear of God, it carries a a richer meaning. Yes, we should be terrified of what will happen to us if we live in rebellion to God, but the fear of God is also to affect those who love him. In the Bible, fearing the Lord means showing God the respect that's due to him for how great he is. It's holding him in an appropriate reverence as a God of love and, as the Bible describes him, a consuming fire. We also have the word equity here, which many people probably already kind of know what that means. But being equitable means means being fair and impartial. God is a fair and impartial judge. We've titled our seven verses today, God's name known and praised in all of the earth. The author of Psalm 67 began with a statement that's very reminiscent of the priestly prayer that Aaron was supposed to pray over the people that's found in number six verse 24 through 26, and I don't have that on the outline, but let me read it to you. This is uh, verses 22 through 27 of number 6. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, thus you shall bless the people of Israel. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So shall they put my name upon the people of Israel, and I will bless them. And so the psalmist writes at the beginning of this psalm, May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Seems almost like an abbreviated version of what we see in Numbers. The reason that the psalmist asked for this blessing is explained in verse 2. It was so that God's name would be known to others through the blessings that God gave to his people. It was the psalmist's hope that all people would come to worship the true God. All nations should rejoice in the fact that God judges the earth because he judges with equity and fairness. There's a lot of judges, a lot of leaders, a lot of politicians who certainly do not uphold the virtues of equity and fairness and have the rule over many, many people, and they suffer because of it. Not God. God is a fair judge. The psalmist draws his short psalm to a close with an encouragement for all the people of the earth to fear God and to praise him. For our short chapter today, I have somewhat of an equally short application. Question for you to think about. Why do you pray for blessings, and what do you intend to use them for if you receive them? Some people pray for blessings because they just want to live more luxurious lives. They want more comforts, more things to occupy their time, you know, you know, nicer, better things for their hobbies. Maybe some people want to flaunt those things that they have so that other people know how well to do they are. But notice the reason that the psalmist in Psalm 67 wanted God's blessings for his people. He wanted God to bless his people so that other nations would look at his people, and they would admire the God that they served. They'd be like, wow, those those people in Israel, their God must be true. Their God must be real. Look at the way that he's blessed them. That's why the psalmist wanted blessings. So it's not wrong to pray for blessings, certainly not. But when we do, let's have a plan for how we want to use those blessings in living a life for God and bringing glory to his name.